Hey everyone, this is Goober, and welcome to A Bunch of Barrels. And by that I mean a Red Faction level editor tutorial that's going to show you how to import these barrels into the game for use in your multiplayer maps. This tutorial is going to cover how to import the barrel both as geometry, which you can see here in this untextured gray barrel that casts a shadow and such, as well as as a uh, UV unwrap textured mesh, which you're seeing in these other four textured barrels. Um, this is uh, actually as a clutter mesh, similar to you know the furniture, chairs, light fixtures, stuff like that in the base game. A um, couple of things I want to mention before we get started. One, uh, this um, method to import these as custom clutter meshes, which is what you're seeing in these textured barrels, only works as of Dash Faction 150. I'd like to send a huge shout out to Rafal, the developer of Dash Faction, for implementing this in his patch. This is something that the game's been sorely missing since um, its release in 2001, and I'd just like to send him a token of my appreciation for that. The second thing that I'll mention is that this tutorial isn't going to cover actually exporting the mesh from Blend and converting it into a Red Faction compatible format using Rafal's tool. I'll link up in the top right hand corner as well in the description down below to my uh, last level editor tutorial, or sorry, my last modding tutorial on importing custom meshes from Blender uh, into a Red Faction compatible format. Um, if you haven't seen that video yet, I'd recommend you watch it uh, before you watch this one because this video is only going to cover after you have the mesh in a Red Faction compatible format, which is V3M, getting it into the level editor um, after that. So yeah, you might want to watch that video before you watch this if you haven't already. Anyway, that all being said, let's jump over to the level editor and get started. Okay, so let's get started. Now I know I said we were going to go right into the level editor. I just wanted to show you these files first, just so that you uh, you can follow along with me if you like. So I'm going to upload these files, two faction files, and link them in the description below if you want to follow along. Original source here, these are the original files that I used to make this tutorial. This here is the source for the model that I'm going to use. This is the original OBJ file that I downloaded from that website. Here's the three texture maps, the diffuse map, the normal map, and the specular map. Red Faction can't use normal or specular maps, so I have consolidated all of them and baked them down into, uh, into this um, one diffuse map here that we can use in game. I've provided this as well, so the tutorial work folder I'm going to include as well, in addition to the um, finished map that I'm going to make in a second. I'll dump it in here once it's done. Um, these here are the source files for how I got these two files at the end, which is what we're actually going to use in the tutorial. This is the command to run with V3D tool, the blend file, and the GLTF file that I ran through Rafal's tool. Like I said, that's not something that I'm going to be covering in this tutorial, but if you watch the other tutorial that I made and you wanted to follow along with the files that we're going to use in this tutorial, um, I've included the files here to allow you to do that, so feel free. But like I said, these here are the files that we're actually going to be using in this tutorial. The V3M file is our Red Faction compatible static mesh file, and the TGA file here is the texture um, for, that, uh, for that mesh. So let's jump over into the editor. Now, first thing, I'm going to make us a little work area to, uh, to play in. So we're gonna make a 10 by 20 by 20 box. I'm gonna put a light in the center of the room so that we've got some lighting when we calculate it, just so things look a little less um, kind of monotone and grayscale. Um, and uh, now that's done. So. Now, let's explain the logic for how this is gonna work. So first things first, we're not actually going to be um, importing new clutter objects themselves. We can't do that for multiplayer maps in Red Faction. We're stuck to the exact ones that the game ships with. This is because those are defined in the clutter.tpl file, which is in tables.vpp. You can't edit that, or you can't distribute new copies of that with your map, rather, so we're stuck with what they configured. What we can do as of dash faction 150 is we can use this event right here, switch model, um, and this event has actually worked both in single player and in multiplayer since the game released. What's different about Dash Faction and the difference that Dash Faction makes is that this mesh field right here, this file name field rather, prior to Dash Faction 150, you could only switch an object or switch a model rather to a model that was included in the base game. And that by that I mean included in the meshes.vpp file in the base red faction folder. This obviously, as you can imagine, is pretty limited. You could, you know, change a computer to look like a table or, you know, change a coffee mug to look like a light fixture if you wanted to, but you were stuck to just the meshes that were in the default game. What Dash Faction 150 did is allow you to import, or sorry, switch to models that are in your user maps multi or user maps single folder 
that, you know, long story short, means that we can include custom meshes in our maps VPP file, our maps pack file, and then switch an existing clutter object to look like our custom mesh, which is exactly what we're going to be doing in this tutorial, at least the first part of it. So to do that, we need to select a clutter object that most closely matches what we are trying to do. And I say that for a very specific reason. I say that because clutter objects in the game have configured material values like metal, cement, uh, rock, glass, these sorts of things, and life values before they either explode, turn into a corpse mesh, you know, a whole, whole swath of stuff. Um, when we switch the model of a clutter object, we're not changing any of those details. We can't change any of those details without making a conversion mod, in fact. So we need to pick a clutter object that matches the material and life that we want our object to have. For my first barrel, and I'm going to make a couple of barrels here just to show you the difference when we get in game. For my first barrel, I'm going to select a metal object that has uh, no life. So it's a metal object that's going to stay forever no matter how much uh, damage gets dealt to it. So I think I went through this before and I found furniture uh, counter. No, actually counter has a corpse mesh. Hang on. Um, furniture see here bench I don't believe yeah this doesn't have a corpse mesh so we'll use bench 01 I'm just going to grid align that move that to the bottom of the map and move it slightly off the floor just so we don't risk it being outside the map the positioning of this you can see it's through the floor is completely irrelevant because we're going to be switching the mesh to our custom mesh so we'll just leave that there for now now next I'm going to make one that uh, is still metal because that's metal but this one is going to be a metal object that has a corpse mesh to show you how that works. So uh, consoles I think this one right here yes this one has a corpse mesh and it's metal. So grid align that same thing with that slightly off the ground as I said doesn't matter that these are inside of each other they're not going to look like this in game anyway. Um, next up, we're going to make uh, something that is a different material. Um, so I'll just go furniture, coffee table, alt. This here is a glass material, so we'll use that. Um, exact same thing. Doesn't really matter where this is. I'm just going to put that there, so we're going to change that into a barrel, and that barrel will be glass when we walk on it and such. Last thing, I'm going to use what I'd probably do if I was importing this barrel, quite honestly. I'm going to go to Storage, Icy Oil Drum. This one here I'm using for a very specific reason. It is a metal mesh, but it has a small life value. I can't remember the number off the top of my head, but it doesn't take very many shots. Um, and it explodes. It doesn't have a corpse mesh, it just explodes and then the mesh goes away. So we're now going to have a custom or a, an exploding barrel with a custom mesh. That's what this is going to do for us. So, switch model event. I'm going to go into the properties for the switch model event, and in the file name field right here, I'm going to grab the file name of our custom mesh, and I'm going to. What's going on there? I'm going to put that in the file name field right here. Now, what that means is that whenever this switch model event is triggered, it is going to switch the model of any object that it is linked to to this mesh right here instead of whatever mesh they had beforehand. I'm going to select the switch model event, select each one of my clutter objects here one by one, and hit the K key after I do. That's K for kilo, um, and it's going to link them. So you can see these blue arrows here when I select them. Each one of these meshes is uh, linked to from the switch model event, which means that when the switch model event is triggered, each one of these is going to change into our barrel. Next thing, um, I'm going to make a trigger auto. Um, and I'm making this because obviously I want all of these replacements, these switch models, to happen as soon as the level starts. Next thing, I'm going to do what's referred to as a keyframe trick. I'm just going to quickly make one here and, and uh, explain um, a little tiny bit about how it works after I have it done. But if you want more information on exactly how this works, um, I'm going to link in the description down below to a text-based tutorial that I did back a couple of years ago on, uh, on keyframe tricks and how they can be used. But for now, I'll just explain that keyframe tricks allow uh, previously single-player only events, of which Switch Model is one, to function in multiplayer games for both clients and servers. Um, this is going to be necessary for this to work in multiplayer for uh, you know clients. You join a dedicated server and you're going to see our barrel. This is going to be necessary to be in the map. So um, base config for a keyframe trick is 
a delay event, which is put on a moving group, which is what the gold keyframe is right here. This has a silver keyframe. Both the travel times are set to zero, movement type is set to ping pong once, and in the properties of the silver keyframe, I'm going to put whatever event I want to trigger with it, which in this case is the switch model event, in trigger event with UID. I'm going to put the UID for it, rather, which you can get down here when you select it. So now what this is going to do, oh sorry, and I linked my trigger auto to the gold keyframe. So what this is going to do is when the map starts, this trigger auto is going to send a pulse to this gold keyframe. This gold keyframe then moves to the silver keyframe. When it does, it triggers this event by UID, which switches all the models of all of these meshes to what is configured here in my switch model event. So just to save our map, I'm going to name this DM barrel test uh, 11. Sure, why not? Create a pack file. Now, if I load the game, you're going to see that, here we go, absolutely nothing happened. So, actually, no idea why my movement is all messed up. That's interesting. But anyway, um, it tried to switch all of these models to something that doesn't exist. And then this happened. Now, you might be asking why that is. The reason for that is because um, Red Faction doesn't, or sorry, Red Level Editor by default, when you create your level pack file, it's not going to include custom models or their textures. So we need to do this manually. So we're going to go over to our multi folder here. We're going to open this in Descent Manager Builder. We're going to go over to our tutorial work folder here. Where, again, I'm going to include this in the description down below. And we're going to drag both our model and the texture for a model into our uh, VPP file here and click save. Now, if I launch the game, here we go. Here is our model. Now, um, I'll mention very quickly that every time you create a new level pack file, it is going to override or overwrite, sorry, your uh, your pack file that we just added these meshes to, or this mesh and this texture to. So it's gonna be a little annoying. Every time you build your map, you're gonna need to manually add it. Alternatively, you can just make a blank VPP file that's in your multi or single folder that just has your mesh and the texture for your mesh in it and leave that there. Doesn't matter which VPP file it's in as long as it's in one that's in your user maps multi or user maps singer, uh, single folder. Now, uh, left to right, again, this here was our bench. This is a metal. You can hear it when I'm shooting this, at least I hope, hope you can hear that. You can also hear it when I walk on it here or land. There we go. Metal sounds. So metal material. I can shoot this a bunch of times. Doesn't matter. It's not going to break. This here also sounds like metal. If I walk on it, land on it, you're in there metal. But if I shoot this a bunch of times, it explodes. And when it explodes, it turns into this corpse mesh. I'm not really aware of a way to override this corpse mesh, so you probably don't want this. But I just wanted to show you what happens if you do that. This here. We have a glass barrel. This is because... Our landing sounds are glass as well. We converted our coffee table to this. Now, it does have the collision and visibility of our barrel mesh, obviously, but the material is still set to glass because that was uh, the clutter object that we switched mesh to. So you're probably not going to want this because, I mean, a glass barrel that is clearly rusted metal makes absolutely no sense, but I just wanted to show you what was going to happen if you did this. Last one right here. Land on it. Obviously, it's metal. When I shoot it once, it's going to disappear, so I didn't want to do that before, but if I shoot it... Here you go. Our barrel just exploded. Just the same as the icy oil drum would have, but it's now our custom mesh. So we now just made a custom exploding barrel. So we've just covered how to import a custom static mesh as a clutter object in Red Faction multiplayer maps. Now to move on to how to import it as geometry. This is something that has worked in the editor um, basically forever. This is not something new in, uh, in Dash Faction 150, um, but I just wanted to cover it because I, I don't think it's something that's commonly understood or uh, common knowledge that you can do these sorts of things with custom static meshes. So I just wanted to go over it very quickly at the end of this tutorial. First thing we're going to need, obviously, is the V3M file. I will note that the TGA file in this instance is going to be completely useless, um, and that's because when you import custom geometry, you lose all your UV information, your UV coordinates, as well as the configured texture map. So we're not actually going to need this uh, texture map to import the geometry. Obviously, you could bring it in and manually UV unwrap it yourself if you want, but uh, we're not going to be doing that in this tutorial. So. Um, the thing that I want to mention here that is absolutely critical is that um, 
Red will not allow you to import geometry for a static mesh unless that mesh is in the meshes.vpp file in your Red Faction folder. So, although this is not best practice to edit your game's default uh, default mesh files or your message.vpp file in your base game, adding this mesh here, um, even though it's, it's not going to be called anywhere in the game, isn't going to cause any issues, though I would recommend that you remove it from your meshes.vpp file or save a backup of your meshes.vpp file before you start adding custom content to it, um, just to kind of keep it clean. Um, so, open my meshes.vpp file, I'm going to drag this file in here, you can see it at the bottom of the file right here, and I'm going to click save. Now. Next, I need to restart my level editor because this is not going to take effect until I restart the level editor. So now that we have our level editor restarted, I'm just going to open up my map again. All right, here we go. So now I'm going to go to shape here in brush mode. I'm going to select mesh. The type I'm going to set is going to be solid, obviously because I want a solid barrel. I don't want a cave in the shape of a barrel, though that would be kind of interesting. And I'm going to hit browse. Browse to the folder with your file in it. This My file is in the tutorial work folder here. I will note though down at the bottom here, this by default wants you to import v3d files, which are pre-c crunched v3, uh, v3m files. Um, there's actually not even a way to generate a v3d file with Rafal's tool, um, but it doesn't matter. It's looking for v3m files, it just the editor is, uh, is kind of kind of a little messed up here. Um, so you're going to need to hit um, all files, select your v3m file and hit open. When you do that, you can see here that your cookie cutter mesh changes to your, uh, your mesh, um, well, in this case, my barrel. I can then move this just I would with uh, any other cookie cutter brush wherever I'd like, set it to, I'll oh, set the solid again. Um, I think it changed that when I, uh, when I selected that, but anyway, create brush. I'm gonna set this to detail and um, I'm gonna do that because, well, actually here, I'll explain why. If I don't do that, it creates holes. It is very, 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 very common that imported custom geometry is not as, um, uh, let's say clean as geometry that's created in the red level editor. So it may cause holes. I would highly, highly recommend um, to use detail if you're importing, you know, fine uh, detailed static meshes like this kind of is just because you avoid that sort of issue. Um, th there are ways to make it work if you want to have it as a, as you know, a, a non-detail brush, if you want to geo it and those sorts of things, but it sometimes takes a bunch of messing around to get that to work properly, and that's outside the scope of this tutorial. I will note that if you look at this here, it is flat white. And if I calculate light maps, you can see it doesn't even put any light maps on it. In fact, in texture mode here, if I click on one of the faces and hit pick texture, it says that I have to select a textured face. This is not a textured face. This is actually, I think, the only way in the red level editor to create a face that does not have a texture. So we need to texture this. I'm going to select a face, hit Shift S to select all the faces in or on the brush, and hit Apply just to apply our default texture here. Um, this is, as you saw it in the, uh, in the map at the very start of this tutorial, it's just gray. Obviously, if you wanted to texture this with something else, you can you can do that. Like if I wanted to apply this metal texture to it or whatever, do it just like you would with any other uh, any other type of brush. Um, like I mentioned before, it loses all its UV information when you import it, so you're going to have to UV unwrap it yourself if that's something that you're interested in. Anyway, save, create a pack file. Again, after I create a level pack file, like I said a minute ago, I need to go in and manually add these again, and then. I can launch the game. You see all my barrels are still as they were, and here is my geometry barrel. Now, obviously you uh, probably don't want to do this for a barrel, but I mean, there's a lot of people who have used this for things like, uh, you know, high resolution terrain. Um, you can use it to do some sort of, uh, you know, kind of pseudo mapping of specific areas of your map in a 3D editor like Blender and then import them as geometry and texture them and edit them once you get them in there. Um, it's not something that's super commonly used, I'll say, but it definitely could be useful um, in certain situations. So just wanted to mention it. Anyway, I hope this tutorial has been useful to you in learning how to import both custom meshes for use as clutter and as geometry. And I, uh, yeah, I, I hope you make some good maps as a result of this.
Anyway, if you have any further questions or comments or anything like that, we've got an active Red Faction community, including developers, on the Red Faction community Discord server, which I will link in the description below, but it's also redfaction.chat or rfchat.com if you'd like to open that in a web browser and join. Like I said, it'll be in the description below, though, as well. Anyway, I um, hope you learned something. See you later.